And the path to that is through practices like planned grazing, where you're using the animals to actually improve the land. I mean, I, if you think about um, the past when you had large herds of animals moving across the land, you also had grass that was chest high, especially out in the West. And there was a reason for that. Historically, healthy range and grasslands supported large herds, tightly packed, stirring the soil and constantly moving. It's a simple way to work with nature. Well, we run bison. Um, we run uh, about 1,200 breeding cows. Got about 53,000 acres thereabouts that uh, that the bison graze. We're trying to simulate the way it was 300 years ago with the bison herds roaming. There were um, large, very large herds, um, and uh, and there were predators, and they functioned. Um, jointly, um, uh, the predators helping to keep the buffalo in tighter groups, um, affecting the ground differently. Um, they would keep the animals moving from place to place. Um, also, when you have large herds together, um, they would come into an area and, um, and uh, graze it off fairly quickly because there's a lot of mouths eating. There's a lot of hooves hitting the ground. They would continually move on, therefore allowing the rest that's so necessary for the grasses to recover. The land needs the animal. Um, the plants need the animal. They've evolved with the animal, the disturbance from the animals in order to be healthy and vigorous. And we've definitely seen that by um, you know, using herd effect in certain areas, you see vigorous plant regrowth. This animal grazing method is being used throughout the world, and farmers and ranchers are prospering.